Good morning, everybody. Starting the day off at Tim Hortons. It's gonna be a good day today. We're gonna make it a good day. It was kind of sad. I had to leave home, but we're going to work. Got a load that's taking us out west to Regina. I'm just gonna go pick it up and head on out. We got the door open, we got Old Blue warming up. Let's get going. We're putting Old Blue to work. Look at what we got going on here. Full load of these. We take up pretty much the whole trailer. Hope you'll have room at the back for my tarps. And these, like I said, are all going to Regina, Saskatchewan. It's like a six hour drive from here. It's not very far, but it gets the wheels turning. I believe from there I'm heading up to Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, pick up a little lumber, which is gonna take me down south into the US. And there's a load waiting down there somewhere for me. That's the, sort of the rough plan right now. We'll, uh, we'll see what the plan turns into. For now, the plan is we're going to Regina with this. The Flying J in Headingley, just west of Winnipeg. I worked up quite a sweat tying this load down and it's a pretty warm day so I went in for a shower as you do when you sweat and you get all smelly you go for a shower or is it just me is that just something I do well now you know more about me may as well because I didn't want to sit all day I was thinking I could wait till Balgoni right six hours down the road right by Regina that's where we might spend the night or we'll probably spend the night I was like, oh, we can wait till there. I can shower at the end of my day, right? And go to bed clean. And I was thinking, it means I've got to sit here in my filth all day driving. Why? When there's a perfectly good shower right here. So I have your shower. Now I don't have to sit in my own filth all day. I can drive feeling good and clean, smelling good, looking good. No? It's subjective. I'm just putting my shoes on if you're wondering what I'm doing. I want to show you the load. I want to show you my load. One second here. Turn you around. You guys ready? Oh, oh this is going to be exciting. I'll show you what I've been up to. Okay. Okay. There she be. I have no idea what it is. Big, uh, oh, uh, I think it might be HVAC. HVAC stuff, like, I don't know. I can't even get underneath it to show you, but. Yeah, we got a whole load of it. It's super light, super light. My tarps at the back there. Now we're going on to Regina with this. All of these bundles are maybe a couple of hundred pounds each, a few hundred pounds each. We are set, we are ready, we are showered, we are smelling good, we are looking better. Or are we looking good, smelling better? Well, either way, we're smelling good. The other stuff is debatable, I guess. Let's get out there. It's gonna be a good day. Lights on. Load tied down. Truck in gear, release the clutch, and hold on to the steering wheel. Let's go. Six hours, six hours. 
six hours to go. So my delivery is on the One west meters, side. Slight left on. Karen. Cap Manita Road in Man. Turn left into 170 meters. That's Karen, everybody. She uh, likes to talk over me a lot. Very annoying. And she swears. No swearing. Always got to beep that out. Whenever I'm about to make a turn, there's a ding that my GPS makes. That's what that is. It's supposed to alert me. Hey, you remember that thing I just told you five times you're about to do? It's now time to do it. Ding, ding. It's like an elevator, right? Your turn has arrived. too long. See, there's that ding again. She tells me, hey, you gotta turn left in a bit, and then ding, ding. Your turn has arrived. Anyway, what was I saying? What was I talking about? No, nah, that must not have been important. Oh, yes, we're going to the west side of Regina, and Balgoni is on the east side, but I can't think of any good truck stops on the west side of Regina. So I think I'm going to go to Balgoni, the Flying J there, and spend the night there. We'll unload in the morning, drive over there. It'll probably be an extra 30, 40 minutes. And once we're unloaded, like I was saying, we go up to Meadow Lake. Grab some more wood. Head down to Minneapolis. On this road for 85 kilometers. It's way too nice of a day to not have the windows roll down. been smooth sailing. We got here to Brandon. I just pulled into this open lot on the east side of town just to check my load, check my straps, make sure everything is still tight as it should be, and it was. I guess you could say I get a little paranoid with my load securement. I think it's a good thing. I'm not scared that anything's gonna fall off. I'm sure when I roll away with it, I am double sure that it is all tied down. But I still like to double check and make sure as I travel down the road. So the way I do it, I've said this before, but for the new people, I tie down a load, make sure it's tied down, and then I look how it's tied down, and then maybe I'll add one or two straps or chains, just to make sure. Then, as I travel down the road, I go about 
30 minutes, 30 miles, 50 kilometers, and I'll find a place to pull over. I'll check my straps because as you bounce down the road, your freight usually settles, right? Either in its packaging or onto the trailer or it wiggles together or whatever. It settles and your straps become loose. For a half hour, I stop, check my straps, tighten them if need be. And then I go down the road and about two hours down the road, I stop again. Make sure that everything is tight. Same thing as before. Usually it, it stays the same and I don't have to adjust it again after that first time, depending on what you're hauling though. Cause sometimes you, sometimes we haul stuff that settles slowly and consistently and constantly. So the whole trip, it's like settling down and compacting and you have to stop like every hour to keep tightening, keep tightening. And some other freight, you don't want to keep tightening. Like the stuff I'm hauling now has aluminum frames around it and sensitive components on the inside. So I can't tighten it too tight. They always say, you know, kind of leave it uncomfortably loose because it, it's got to be loose enough that you don't damage it, but it's got to be tight enough that it doesn't go flying off the trailer. Got to find that fine balance. So that's why I stop and check. I stopped and checked a uh, little ways down the road. Now that I'm in Brandon, about two hours down the road, stopped again. Everything is good to go. And then after that, I stop about every four hours or so, two to four hours, whenever. Yes, you know, do a walk around. Usually I get out, stretch my legs, and I just do a walk around the truck. Just, you know, pull on every strap. Just make sure it's all tight. Look at the load. Make sure it's all as it should be, that nothing's shifted. And blah, blah, blah. Do the walk around, and then you go inside, grab your coffee, or go for your walk, or whatever you do on your break. Whatever. In Canada here, like I've said, we don't have to take a 30-minute break. In the U.S., you have to, by law, take a 30-minute break within eight hours of starting your day. You can only work for eight hours and you have to stop for half hour and stuff like that. Up here in Canada, we don't have that regulation. We don't have that law. Uh, so we don't have to have to stop for a half hour. I can stop for 21 minutes if I want to. I can stop for 29 minutes. I can stop for 15. I don't legally have to stop at all. But they're going to want to see that you stopped at least, you know, every, every couple of hours, like two to four hours. Just, you know, especially if you're on a flatbed. And you have to mark it down as load check. They're going to want to see that you checked your load. Because if you don't show proof that you checked your load and something goes flying off the back or something and hurts somebody, and they, the lawyers are going to go straight for your logbook, right? They're going to make sure that you are within the law. They're going to tear that apart to see if there's any way they can get you. That's the lawyers of the people that you hurt, right? They're, they're always going after the truckers. It's, as, uh, as it should be, you know, if, if my family got hurt by a, a careless trucker, I, I would send my lawyers after them tooth and nail too. Just for, look for anything, nail them for everything. So you wanna make sure that you cover your butt. So you wanna be able to show that you stopped and checked your load at regular intervals. Maybe a strap broke. Well, did you check? Were you stopping regularly? Or did you load it up in Winnipeg and just drove straight to Calgary and didn't even care to look in your mirrors, you know? They'll look for anything. You have to cover your butt because when bad things happen on the road, it's always your fault. As a truck driver, I know it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> you know that our, our uh, court systems don't always work that way. Legally, you're innocent, yeah, until proven guilty. But by the court of public opinion, you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. You gotta, you gotta pass both courts. Thankfully, I've never had to go through those courts. And I never want to. And you want to make double sure that you stay out of trouble like that because it, it can drag you down fast. Because if, if anything happens, especially if someone gets hurt, and absolutely for sure if someone dies, they're going to come after you for absolutely everything they can. So make sure all your ducks are in a line. All the time. That's my advice to you new drivers out there. You experienced guys, you already know this. So, preaching to the choir there. All right, let's get out of here. Enough bibble babbling. Bibble, bibble babbling. That's a new one. Bibble babbling. Coin that phrase. It's Josh. Trucker Josh. I'll put it on a t-shirt. Bibble babble. Too much bibble babbling. Would you buy that t-shirt?
falling ahead. It's pretty wild, eh? That's one of the things you get on the prairies. That's miles and miles away. It'll probably be long gone by the time we get there. But you can literally see the water falling from the sky. That's so awesome. I don't know, it never gets old. Crazy how the earth works, eh? yet to look forward to. It's already warm enough to wear a t-shirt outside, but it's not too hot. There's no bugs out yet, no mosquitoes yet. It's just awesome. The only downside is that the lakes aren't, aren't warm enough to swim in yet. Jay Travel 
Plaza. I see it. Thank you. All right. Let's see if I can uh, find the best one. Let's circle the lot a couple of times. Make sure we get the best one. I will settle nothing for nothing less than the best. Aha! I see that spot right there already. I want it. Straight ahead of me. As long as the neighbors there are quiet, I'm going to turn around right here and back straight in there. Unless there's something in front of the pumps. I want a straight shot out, right? Ah, it looks like all those spots are taken. Hey, they patched all the potholes. That's nice. That should last a few weeks. Right on. Oh, this spot right here. Is this is spot right here. No, I got a wide load. He took up two spots, didn't he? Ah, he did. He took up two spots. Eh, he didn't need those two spots. That's not very nice. I'm gonna go back and take that other spot I saw over there, I think. Someone filled the spot right beside me right away, so I don't gotta worry about anyone backing into me at night. This guy knows what he's doing, too. Nice. Right on. So I've got a neighbor on this side, and I've got a neighbor on this side. And I've got a straight path, straight out here in the morning. Perfect. Gonna go all the way back here, make sure that we're all good, make sure that we are straight. Nothing is out of place, but I didn't rip the mud flaps off. <laughs> These mud flaps are high enough that they don't get caught on curbs, actually. And even if those were to get ripped off, which that would be, still wouldn't be good, we have these back here. You gotta be careful when you're backing in your trailer. Uh, if you hit the curb and your mud flap is too low, It'll actually rip the mud flap right out of the hangers. Done that before. Been there, done that. Nice. I've got a pretty nice load back here, too. All right. So I'm all ready to. Head on in the sleeper and get to bed. It got real busy here real quick. <laughs> just non-stop. We arrived here just the right time. I just talked to this driver next to me here. Really great guy. Great guy. Truck says he's from Saskatoon, but he just picked that up in uh, southern Manitoba. That load of pipe. And he's bringing it out to, where is this, Swift Current? He was working beside his uh, truck there, just tightening his straps on his on his load. And I went uh, walking past him and said, hey, how's it going? It's good. Good, good. I'm so glad you parked next to me. <laughs> just thank you. Thank you for picking the spot next to me. 
Because as soon as I saw him roll in, I passed him on the highway already. And as soon as I saw him roll in and start backing up, I'm like, hey, thank God this guy knows what he's doing. He's been doing this a long time. And sure enough, yeah, when I talked to him, he's been driving for probably like 20 years or so, if not longer. And uh, <laughs> he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, I was just so glad to have two neighbors right off the bat. Like, you staying here for night? Oh, yeah, I'm staying here for night. Good. And we both know our trucks are safe. <laughs> he owns his truck, too. That's a constant struggle, getting to a, getting to a truck stop and getting a safe parking spot. Because there, sometimes there's a lot of parking. And you can't complain that when you find parking, you find parking. If you need a spot, you're thankful that there is a spot. But some spots are better than others. Not all parking spots are created equal. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so this is like a perfect spot. He said the same thing as me before I could even say it. He's like, yep, this way we know we can drive straight out. We're not going to get blocked in by people parking like... Uh, uh, over here. How do I say this? Over here. We don't have to worry about people parking that way over there and blocking us in. Ooh, that guy's got some backup lights over there, right? Eh? Holy smokes. No one's gonna miss the fact that he's backing up. It's just nice to meet up with a driver that you can just relate to right away. It's gonna be a good night. So I'm just making some food here for myself now and as soon as my hot water kettle is finished heating up the water, uh, I'm going to put all my stuff away here, shut everything down, shut the truck down, and uh, that'll be it for the day. Have I told you already? My, my engine heater is on the fritz, or it's uh, giving me problems now, which is okay because the weather's warmer now, and I don't really need the engine heater. I just used it to like warm up the engine a little bit anyways, but in wintertime, I really need it. It's not working now. I think I need to clean it out. It, you can hear it trying to fire to start up. Uh, I have a Wabasto, like, engine style engine heater just runs off like a little bit of diesel fuel and then it warms up the lines going through the engine it helps me start my truck in, in the cold of winter without plugging it in and I tried to start it up this morning it wouldn't start up and I was having problems with it last week already it was giving me kind of like it, it, when it first started up it smoked a little bit and it doesn't usually smoke I noticed that right away I noticed everything about this truck I know how everything is supposed to be so I noticed that, I'm like, oh, that's going to need a cleaning very soon. And sure enough, today I tried to start it up, wouldn't fire. So it's probably just, they open it up, or you open it up, you just clean it out. It's got a bunch of soot build up in there, and it can't ignite the fuel. That's probably what it is. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, by next winter I have to replace it and get a new engine heater. But good thing I don't need it until next winter, so we have a good six months to worry about that problem. We'll get it fixed as soon as possible though because I don't like to let a problem fester. I like to fix things right away so that I don't have to you know, be surprised by it later and be like, oh yeah, I have to fix that. Shoot, I forgot about that. I didn't budget for that now. Yeah, no, you know what, just it breaks, boom, fix it. Right away, right away. Thanks everybody for hanging out with me today. It's been fun, we're in Balgonia, Saskatchewan. Tomorrow we deliver down the road in Regina, just on the west side of the city. And then we go up to Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. I've already got my next load planned out. I'm going to pick up a load of lumber there. We're going to go straight to Minneapolis, Minnesota, where everyone is so happy all the time because it's Minneapolis. We're going to go there, and then from there I don't know the plan yet. Okay, that's all I know so far. But I'm most likely going to be going home from there because we got plans a few days after that. A very special day coming up by the time you watch this it'll probably be it might be closer or gone already but it's mother's day and it's a very big one for brit very big it's her first mother's day as an actual as as a mother as an actual mother and i want her to be perfect i want her to be great so i'm not going to tell you what the plans are in case if mother's day hasn't happened yet because i don't want to spoil it for her but we, we she says she wants to do something low-key, so not something overly big. I've already got one gift for her, which is the big one, but that's going to be happening on a different day than Mother's Day because my plans, if a lot of other people had the same plans for Mother's Day and it was already all filled up. That's all I'll say. But we'll just have to do it another weekend, but it'll be for Mother's Day. Anyways. Don't forget to hug your mother and tell her you love her on Mother's Day. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.